All right, so now we'll get into kind of, you know, at least an introduction to how you start working with Taylor series, right? Why are these useful? Um, well, you get some basic examples, right, straight from the definition, but most Taylor series formulas that people come up with don't necessarily come from the definition, right? We're not going to sit there calculating all the derivatives of our function until we see a pattern. We often try to get new Taylor series from old Taylor series, right? Um, for example, the series for the natural log, well, one way to see where this comes from is that, you know, the antiderivative of 1 over 1 minus x is log of minus log of 1 minus x, right? Absolute value, you can, there's a relationship between the two, right? Um, and so you can, you can kind of shift things around a little bit here um, if you want to kind of replace x by, say, x plus 1, so that this is just an x on the bottom, or maybe 1 minus x there, right? And then you can start expanding things in powers of, of let's say, 1 minus x. You can get that relationship, okay? So there are things like that that you can do. Uh, another example where we can make use of this is we can, you know, quickly from here we can say, and we mentioned this in the last video on binomial theorem, that 1 over 1 minus x, well, that's the sum, and going from 0 to infinity of, of x to the n. Well, that means that 1 over 1 plus x, right? That's 1 over 1 subtract minus x. And the power of Taylor series is that you can do substitutions, right? You can substitute x with something else. Um, and, I mean, Sometimes if you, know, if you substitute the wrong thing, the result is not going to be a power series anymore, and that could be problematic. But we can, for example, replace x by minus x. And if we make that replacement here, right, one replacing x by minus x, well, we can replace it there as well. So we get n going from 0 to infinity minus x to the n, or if we like, n going from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n times x to the n. Okay, so we can do something like that. Um, well, we can keep going with this, right? We could say, well, that's true. Then it should also be true that if I want to do, say, 1 uh, over 1 plus x squared, right, that should be like 1 over 1 minus minus x squared. Okay, so that should be like the sum n going from 0 to infinity of well, again, minus 1 to the n, and now it's x squared to the n, okay? Which is n sum, n going from 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the n, x to the 2n, right? And again, we have to be, you know, for all of this here, absolute value of x still has to be less than 1, right? The nice thing about if you're replacing x by a power of x, radius is going to stay the same, right? If x is less than 1, any power of x is still less than 1, which is good to know. Okay, but the other thing we know is that if we stay within our radius of convergence, we're allowed to do things like integrate and differentiate term by term, right? So what happens if we integrate both sides of this equation? What do we get on this side? Okay, so what if I do something like this? What if I do the the integral from, let's say, 0 to x of 1 over 1 plus t squared dt, okay? Well, on the one hand, I know what this is. This is going to be, it's arc tan of t evaluated from 0 to x. Arc tan of 0 is, is 0, right? So this is just arc tan of, of x. Very good. Okay, but this is also equal to the integral from 0 to x of the sum and going from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the n t to the 2n dt. All right, so let's be careful here. We have bracketing like so. But we have a theorem that says we're allowed, to, we're allowed to exchange these two limits. We're allowed to exchange the integral and the sum 
And so we can write this as the sum n going from 0 to infinity okay, of the integral from 0 to x t to the 2n dt. Okay. Oh, minus 1 to the n, but we can pull that out, right? That's a constant as far as the integral is concerned. Uh, and that's a simple enough antiderivative to do, and we can plug in the limits. And so what do we get? We get the sum n going from 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the n. That's going to be x now to the 2n plus 1 divided by 2n plus 1. All right. And now we have a power series that represents arc 10, right? We have essentially a Maclaurin series for arc 10. And that's going to be a heck of a lot easier than sitting there and just taking derivatives, right? Taking derivatives of arc 10 and waiting to see if we can spot a pattern. Um, we can just sort of do this substitution, integrate term by term. We get the answer. And this is sort of a more straightforward approach to, to solving some of these problems, right? Um, Similarly, if we wanted to know things like what's the, what would be a power series for, say, 1 over 1 minus x to the minus 2, right? What if I wanted to do that? What if I wanted 1 over 1 minus x all squared? Well, there's an observation we might make here, which is that's exactly what you get if you take the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x, right? Because that's 1 minus x to the minus 1. We take the derivative, we get minus 1, 1 minus x to the minus 2, times another minus 1 from the chain rule. Okay? Ah, but we can take the derivative of this thing term by term, and we just get the sum n going from 1 to infinity of n times x to the n minus 1. Right, which we, if we want, we can re-index that and goes from 0 to infinity n plus 1 x to the n. Right, And now you have a power series expansion for 1 over 1 minus x squared. Or perhaps more useful would be the observation that if this power series popped up, you can identify it with a function, right? Um, so this is, this is where working with Taylor series starts to become very powerful, is that you can do these manipulations. Uh, you can get new Taylor series from old Taylor series and start increasing the you know, range of functions that you can represent by Taylor series. Um, so we'll look at a few more examples, a couple more videos before we, uh, before we end the chapter. Um, but I think this is a good example to start with.